If you're wanting to buy a home in Austin in 2024, do not make these three big mistakes. Last year, we helped over 20 buyers to get homes in Austin. All of them were super happy, but we had several other clients that just missed out on some opportunities by making these mistakes. So I'm going to break it down so that you can have success in 2024. So I'm going to start off with the three main mistakes that we saw people make last year that cost them great opportunities. And then I'm going to throw in a bonus one. That's just a warning that I saw other people that made that were not my clients, but definitely you do not want to make the last one for sure. So the first big mistake is waiting for the rates to drop. Interest rates have been all over the news. They've gone up, they went down a little, they went back up. Here's the bottom line. You cannot control interest rates. There's no way that any one of us can predict what the rate will be in six months in a year or whatever. So if you are currently in a home that you are not happy with, or you're renting or whatever, just waiting for this perfect moment, you don't know when that's going to be. So the question that I like to ask people instead is, okay, you're waiting for the rates to drop. Most likely that's because you're wanting a lower monthly payment. So what is your ideal monthly payment right now? And so if you can give us a range of like, well, I don't want to spend more than 3000 a month or 4,000 a month, then we can work with a lender to find out, all right, what would that look like? How much could you afford with today's rate to keep your budget within 4,000 a month? Now, if you're not happy with the choices of the homes you're seeing, because it's like, well, because of the rates, now my purchase price is a little lower. I would love to get a house that's a little more expensive. Don't give up right there. There's a lot of creative solutions that we've helped our buyers with that allowed them to get into a higher price point of a home that they really love and still keep their monthly payments down. So be open to some creative solutions there. So one of the things is we are in a different type of market right now where buyers have a lot of power. And I don't think buyers truly realize how much bargaining power they have in Austin right now. So our prices have already dipped. We're still about nine to 10% less than where we were at the height of the market in 2022. And then on top of that, we're seeing our buyers get huge price discounts, um, closing costs from the seller. So you could actually get the seller to give you the money to buy your rate down. A lot of our clients are choosing two, one buy downs where you get two points off the interest rate for the first year, one point off the second year, and then you're locked in at whatever the current rate is. But the plan for that is that you can actually refinance within those two years and the cost of the buy down pays for part of the refinance. So it allows you to refi when rates do go down and you can lock in something permanently at that point. And again, we're getting sellers or new construction builders to pay for that. So it's not something that our buyers are having to do out of pocket. That is saving people hundreds of dollars a month and helping them get into homes that they truly love. So a couple other options other than lowering the price or negotiating closing costs for the rate buy down would be to put a higher amount of down payment. So a lot of clients already own a home somewhere else. They built up a ton of equity. So instead of doing 10% down 15, they might put 25%, 30% down, and that helps them to get their monthly payment where they need to be. The other thing is to check for um, properties that have lower tax rates. In Texas, especially in Austin, our tax rates can be high, so they can be anywhere from around 2% up to 3%. So if you're already fighting higher rates, definitely don't shop in those 3% tax rates, shop for something a little bit lower and that can make a huge difference on what you can afford. And finally, new construction has been unbelievable as far as discounts and incredible deals. A lot of new home builders are just giving buyers flat fixed rates of like 4.9%, 5.5% if they go with their preferred lender. And it's really hard to beat that. The homes are already at a discount and then they are just paying for you to have this lower rate. So as I mentioned, focus on the market right now. You cannot control rates, 
but you can control your monthly payments. And I guarantee you one thing that if you are waiting for the rates to drop, even if they go back down into the fives, there are so many other buyers sitting on the sideline waiting for the same thing. And at that moment, when the rates come down, prices are naturally going to go back up. So you're always chasing something that's a moving target. It's never going to be a perfect, perfect time to buy. So work with the market you're in, use these creative solutions to help you get a monthly payment that you can afford. Now, the second thing to be aware of is property taxes. You want to make sure you are calculating property taxes into your budget on what you think you can comfortably afford. Now, working with a local Austin lender is definitely the best move. If you're financing, talk to a local Austin lender that is familiar with all the tax rates and they can help you budget and estimate that so you're not assuming you can afford more and then being shocked to find out that the property taxes are so high. Now, as I mentioned earlier, they can range anywhere from two to 3%. Um, I would say two to two and a half is more average. The 3% range is in some suburb areas with new construction communities, but definitely that's not common. There are also some property taxes that are lower, like 1.7, 1.8 but that also is not as common either. So I would try to budget around a 2.25, 2.5 or so percent tax rate when you're trying to factor in what you can afford. Now, this is a true story. I had a client one time, this was an older retired couple. They were cash buyers. They showed me, okay, we have proof of funds here. We can buy a home comfortably up to 500,000. And so I was like, great. So we wasted several days you know going out they had spent weeks and months beforehand just scouring through homes on zillow and they had picked out certain areas that they loved and they had told me they said we want to keep ourselves on a lower tax rate because we're retired we have a fixed income so we don't want anything high now i should have asked to clarify there because i know that high is about three percent so i said okay we can try to keep it lower. So I was trying to search for stuff that was like 2.3% and under thinking that's pretty low. Well, I did not realize that on Zillow, the tax rates that you see for Austin homes are way off. So we found a home that they really loved and they were like, okay, we want to put in an offer on this. Can you send us all the details? So I sent them all the details from the MLS, the seller's disclosure and everything. And they called back and they were like, oh my gosh, this says that the tax rate is like 2%. And I was like, yeah, that's good. We, you know, we said we wanted to keep it low. And they're like, that's horrible. Zillow says it's only 0.85%. And I'm like, nothing. And I don't even know if there's anywhere in the state of Texas where you can get a property tax that's less than 1%. Um, so I looked it up on Zillow and sure enough, that's what it said. And so I printed out the tax records from the county. I showed them the MLS tax listing and they were just shocked. They were like, what in the world? Well, I'm not sure how Zillow is calculating it, but I can tell you on all of their listings, the tax rate is off. Here's a listing I have. The tax rate is 2.42%, but Zillow says it's 1.5%. So if you were looking at monthly payments off Zillow, you're way off in Austin for sure. So don't trust Zillow. You need to ask us to help you set up a search. If you're wanting to keep the tax rate in check, we will send you properties that are within a certain tax range and we can let you know what they really are because those third party sites are definitely off. Now the third mistake to avoid is wanting a perfect house and being so picky that every little thing has to be just right or else it's not the one. Well, I can tell you there is no such thing as a perfect house. Even if a house is absolutely spectacular and it's brand new, there will always be things that you don't love about it. So I've had some clients whose checklist of things that they want in a home is this big. And we'll have to really try to narrow it down. Okay, what of these are deal breakers, meaning you cannot live here, and which of these things would just be nice to have? Because if you start saying, I want all of these things, I want a gas fireplace, and I want a gas cooktop stove, and I want quartz counters, and I don't want any carpet, and I want a quarter acre lot, and I want a fenced in yard, and I want all these different things, just one after another, 
your choices are gonna be down to this. You may not even find anything that has all of those details. So be a little more open, okay? Maybe there's ugly carpet, but that's an easy fix. You could ask the seller for a credit at closing to go replace it with some wood floors. And there's contractors and different people we work with that could set that up immediately after closing. So it's not like a huge renovation project. And there's a good chance in the current market you could get the seller to actually help pay for some of that. There's other things like maybe you love the home, but it doesn't have a fence. That's not a deal breaker. Just get a fencing company to give you a quote and just put a fence in there. Either again, offer a slightly lower price, ask for a credit at closing. This is something that could easily be fixed. It's not a reason to rule out a house. So those are our three biggest mistakes where we saw clients lose out on opportunities. Don't make those mistakes. Now the fourth bonus one that I wanna share is a mistake that I saw other people make. I actually had three people reach out to me in the last year asking me to sell their home because they made this mistake. Now what's really scary is all of them had only lived in the home for a year or less. And that is horrible. You do not want to buy a home and then have to immediately sell it because you will always lose money. It takes years for homes to go up in value and for you to build up appreciation. So the mistake that they made is that they had not really researched the area and the commute time and how long it was going to take to get to all the places that they really loved. And so all of them ended up being in suburb areas that were just too far away from either their job, um, the places that they wanted to go for fun, and they just hated it. And they're like, I can't stand living here. I wanna be closer to town. And I'm thinking, well, how did you not know that when you bought the house? So several of them bought from out of state. They had an agent that they trusted that was just telling them, oh yeah, this is a great area. And they just really did not spend enough time exploring it in person themselves. So my tip is that if you think you found an area that you like and we go and tour it at one o'clock in the afternoon when there's not a lot of traffic, you better come back in the evening. See what it feels like to drive home from downtown if that's where you work and see what the commute time is during rush hour. Go drive around and see where are the cool restaurants or bars or parks or playgrounds for the kids, wherever you wanna go, whatever you see yourself doing drive around the area and see, do these things exist out here? We always try to ask our clients, you know, what do you want to do for work, life, and play? You know, so are you working downtown? We need to factor in that commute time. Do you need, you know, a school district, fun things to do for fun on the weekend with your kids or family? Um, what kind of lifestyle do you want? Do you need to be close to the lake? Do you want to be close to where your family is? You know, maybe you have extended family here. So all of those things make up a, a boundary of where you want to be located because our commute time and traffic times in Austin can really get out of hand. So before you make any big purchase decision, always make sure you are not making those four big mistakes. Be prepared as possible. And of course, call us as step one to get started because we're gonna make sure we're guiding you to be successful and happy as a homeowner in 2024.